now. Hmm? Where did the idea come from for the film? What was the inspiration? It's interesting because it was actually on a trip to Ikea. <laughs> I, uh, I suddenly started thinking about my own family and um, one of the big themes of my family, my father is a very prolific writer and wrote over 40 novels and it kind of crushed my sis a little bit, she wanted to be a writer, so that was kind of the main theme for me and, and I worked from there. Uh, my old brother David actually is very much you know, a brilliant guy like the David character and like Peter Baggins in real life. Um, He's a, he's a lawyer, he's not a scientist, but, but uh, very intellectual, the same way uh, David is. And it kind of just grew from there. Also, the, the idea that, that you know, the women in my family are all brilliant and endure all the guys, and you know, all the guys are very immature and kind of had a lot to learn. So that's where I came from. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did the family get any time to rehearse together? Actually, only one evening, right? When I Yes. Oh, we did a read through. Yeah. The night before we start, I don't think mine works. The night. <laughs> I can project. <laughs> um, the night before we started filming, we had one read through. Impressive. Very impressive. <laughs> I just wanted to comment on the strong performances. I mean, yeah, that was really amazing. strong performances. I mean, I'm, I'm beyond proud of what this cast um, delivered in such a short time, 16 days, it's amazing. I'm so proud of it. It's amazing performances all the way around, and uh, yeah, how they contribute to everything, yeah. Mm -hmm. For the actors, what drew you to each of your characters, or what from the script like really mm -hmm. caught your attention? Are we going down the line? <laughs> <laughs> um, initially, when I read the script, um, Brittany, I've, I think every character that you play somehow has to connect with you or your essence um, so that you can bring to it. And I've experienced being on the outside of a fairly dysfunctional family um, and not looking at them as bad people but more of the circumstances that they've gone through and kind of just figuring out how to be um, helpful or just uh, participate um, amongst that. So that's something that I thought that I could at least bring to help the story along. Yeah, I don't know, I originally saw this as sort of a one-sided kind of guy or whatever, and as we continued to work on it, it was uh, cool and with the you know other professional actors and um, it was, uh, you guys got painted, right? <laughs> 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 But it was just so cool. It turned into something really kind of uh, amazing, and just uh, it was such a great crew. And I see some of them here, and I really appreciate it because they worked really long hours on it. And yeah, just to kind of like uh, you know come up with something that kind of turns around and you kind of becomes a man and stuff like that. But more importantly, I was just pleased to be a part of the the professionalism involved from the top down here. Um. <laughs> um. I, I too, kind of, I think what I love about reading scripts and new stories is that I end up um, having so much empathy for people and situations that I may not have seen from Catherine's eyes um, in the world. And reading as Sophie, who could have been someone that, you know, and maybe she is, that just everyone hates. Um, as this young thing that comes into this family. Um, but I tried to have empathy for the sense of that this girl really does does care for this guy and, and this family and, and that someone can be more than, than what they appear to be and, and maybe there's something to be learned from that. I actually felt like I didn't want to do it when I read it, but that's not because I didn't like it, <laughs> but because I knew it would be like really depressing to do. Um, so I was like, oh God, like, and I also like I'm a hypochondriac, I, I don't want to think that I have cancer for so many days in a row. And actually one night, I um, 
early on. I, uh, I have a mole that I since got removed, um, but I called my parents in a full panic. And I was like, I, I, know, I know, I know, this is probably because I'm doing this cancer movie, and my mother's even more cancer phobic than me, so she's like, I mean, really, she, I, I was like, Mom, buckle your seatbelt. Uh, I'm doing a movie, and I'm playing a guy with cancer. And she was like, ooh. Yeah, I might have to skip that one. So, but but I, I, I called them pa panicked. I was like, I have this mole, and I'm pretty sure it's nothing. But do you, do, and, and it, it's huge. It's, it's enormous. It was. I've suddenly like grown three times in size since I started doing the movie. Um, that's method. They, they, yeah, right. No, no, no. I, I just got a blood test back. I have no, I don't have cancer. Um, but I say all this to say, you know, it's not necessarily fun, actually. It's sometimes like just, it was really like, felt like a very um, painful at many moments, but then, then you do it and it's like a celebration of, and, and you feel like you, 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 ultimately it's good, but it is a little um, tough to do a movie like this, uh, which, and, and I think it's great, uh, and I'll, I'll just wrap it up soon, but um, yeah, no, it really sustains like a level of um, tragedy, and hey, life has that. Okay. Um, I uh, I just thought it was really interesting to read lots of characters that were so uh, fallible um, in one thing. I think we're so used to getting like really um, perfect versions of, of people, and I thought Tanya was kind of awful at the start, and then. There's a line about, like, you know, that she shouldn't like you more than just trying not to be miserable all the time. And I, I think, uh, unfortunately, there are quite a lot of people who go through life really just trying, in Tanya's case, pretty unsuccessfully, to survive feeling awful about themselves or about what's going on in their lives at that point. And I thought, I just thought that was interesting, the, the trying that. What was the decision behind choosing to have her accident as part of the closure? <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, I mean, it's my fault, appropriately. Yeah, it's Adam's fault. I just thought it was kind of Andy's kind of turn to say something, so I'll, I'll jump in if it's like crazy. I'll just say one thing. <laughs> I think I remember during, <clears throat> during that scene, the yeah, funeral scene, I think Jason came up to me and said, so he loses his wife after he finds out she's cheating on him and the brother's dying of cancer. What is the point to all this? And, you know, I didn't really have a great answer there. So that's why I'm going to say, Adam. <laughs> I, I think that, I mean, there's certainly no kind of moral that because he cheats, he dies, nothing like that. That's never been, never been the, the intention. But I think that it's a bit of a cautionary tale in the sense that when you when you do wrap your family up and you set this crazy express train in motion, um, you know you can cause a lot of harm in a, in an emotional way that's that kind of becomes a chain reaction that's out of your control. And sometimes life is that unfair. You know, sometimes life is just that unfair, and it's out of your control. And and tragic things happen that you never see coming. I think that's why it was important for me that the movie ends the way it does. You know. If that's you know an answer, that's how I see it. I just want to say that I really enjoyed the film. Uh, really enjoyed all the performances very much. Was didn't know very much about it, but got caught up in in every scene with all of the actors and and bought into it so much that I don't even think I could ask a question now because I feel like I'm intruding on their lives. <laughs> And I really think you did a wonderful job directing um, the film, and I so liked how you stayed on the character as opposed to just going to action or cutting away and letting it uh, really breathe and, and let that actor take you to a place. And, uh, um, and I thought it really made it, you know, a terrific film. Yeah, I can only do that with this quality access. Oh, this would be possible. Oh, yeah, I would, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was amazing. He he actually just to say a point. He he wouldn't go let us get through the like if you didn't have the master perfectly like 
exactly how he wanted it. You would keep doing the master, and we would do that for sometimes a couple of hours <laughs> before you would move into coverage, which is very rare. Usually you find it in the coverage, but it was kind of amazing because some of those are six-page scenes, and it felt like doing a mini play, and he wouldn't let it go until it was like the master felt right, and we kind of were joking, me and Anna, sorry Anna, I'm throwing you into the bus here, but... Great. Um, like, at, at the end of these scenes that were so horrible, and everybody's crying, he would be like, yes, this feels like a family. We're like, what? <laughs> what kind of family is this? You know, but um, it did feel very real, and, and I think it's, but I think it's incredible, and I, I don't think it's ends on a sour note. Just in my opinion, I think it's 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 very makes you think in a positive way. Yeah. Hi. Okay, I'm just go. Um, a first of all, you guys all were so amazing. I'm so proud, um, and I love the film. I am shocked to hear it was only one night of rehearsal. And I'm just like, how did you guys find your way to do this? Because by the way, I could not believe how likable she was. She was like the light of the group. And Glenn's like the glue, which is so funny because they are the two outsiders. And I didn't see that play when I read the script, but that's how I expected to be sort of a, you know, that girl. Um, so I loved what you brought. That was it was like it was amazing. I'm curious how you guys found your way so quickly because the relationships felt really authentic. So that's it's all for you guys. Good people. Thank you. Great passages. Is our cast director? I'm going like I'm impressed. Like Tanya. Sorry. Like, by the way, you're American. I have. I forgot you were English. <laughs> that was fantastic. But like, you guys, you and Peter, the relationship was so deep. How did you guys build that? I guess what you're trying to ask: How much they met before they shot? Yeah. So, how do you like find it? They create such an authentic family. What did you do? What did you do? Yes. Uh, you, you use your imagination. <laughs> <laughs> jump in and you say, you know, this is this person in my life, and this is this person in my life, and I love this person, and you just, I think you do it. You just jump. I did love that you can I also think that the movie had been in such a great way, with such a great body of heads, right? And also, the fact that we had the screenwriter on set as well, you know, we discussed every scene and nuances and adjust, and I think the the biggest, most important quality of a writer or director is to listen to his cast, to their cast, into his cast, into his understanding the, the the challenges, the turmoil, and and intricacies of the characters, and staying true to that, and never go, no, 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 that's not right. And rather go, yeah, let's see how that plays out. I think that I had many talks with Peter, you know, like, you know, yeah, I don't really like. Peter would say, I don't really like what's on the paper. Can I kind of try to do it like this instead? And then Anthony would go into this kind of little bit this. Uh, uh, more of uh, no, 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 but it's try to explain and defend it, and I would hey, let, let, let him try and play it out, and then we were like, meet somewhere in between, it would, would turn out wonderfully, right? Because we just went with it, right? And we just trusted that somewhere in there, we found our own secret language amongst us that kind of just turned out very well, and we all trust each other, and, and we're all there for the characters. I mean, I've made many things before TV shows and movies where it was all about being more like a, a certain thought that had to be go from A to B here. It's more about getting the characters through an emotional journey that would feel relatable to as many people as possible, right? And I think that's what we stay true to. And that's also why what made it interesting to go to work every day on this movie. Uh, that we kind of we did that, right? I mean, it's, it was all about the character and not about any superficial action or explosions or something to good kind of car chase or whatever. Yeah. What was the yeah. most challenging moment for each of you as as your characters, either a scene or a specific moment within a scene? I, I found filming this scene where we're at the restaurant really challenging because um, Peter's character drops this bomb for Jason and me very early on and we don't really get to deal with it at all. Then the scene becomes about other things 
And so we were trying to, between us, like sustain this tension from this major event in our relationship throughout that scene. And I think it works and it pays off at the end of the scene, but I remember that being difficult to figure out how to kind of mm. navigate that with, with so many characters in the middle of it. Everyone else found everything really easy. So. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that is a good one. The, the group scenes were difficult. Um, yeah. uh, for me, I felt, I think, there's quite a few things that were challenging, um, but I definitely felt challenged with the scene with Peter and I uh, by the pool. But it's it's so good, and I'll, 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 I I was being I was being mean a little. I was being a jerk. No, 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 no. I was. I was like saying this moment was bad, and it was good. It actually was about you, Peter. No, but I wanted to. Oh no, no, yeah, I, I know that obviously. Yeah. As Sophie, I'm I'm dating his father, and I felt that Sophie was a good person. Um, that's how I took it. Um, and so as a good person, I kind of had difficulty finding why I would suddenly do this um, with his son. And it ended up being something that, you know, we made it. That was one thing that we ended up changing, that um, we were able to create a scene right before it where Billy and I, um, or Keith and I, had like some sort of fight. So you watched him talk to me as a child so that there was um, kind of those boundaries set. And then I kind of gave in to the fact that this, that this person was was really going through it and was looking for some sort of connection. And I went with the empathy of that. But that was very difficult for me to justify um, at the beginning, for sure. I apologize for cutting you off, Catherine. That, that wasn't cool. But I do want to give you the compliment that that, w that moment about the stars, which I, I thought like wouldn't play, it really did, thanks to your performance. It was even better as an audience member than it was as the uh, scene director. <laughs> no, I mean that. Uh, cool. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, it was just cool. It was, like I said, we were doing six, seven page scenes in, in one go, and I mean, you know, I remember like, you know, sometimes we'd, we'd finish a take and the crew would applaud. And it was unbelievable. I don't know if I've ever had that happen, and that happened multiple times, and uh, it was, really incredible and to have the writer on the set like to work with you and you know to be so fluid and, and responsive and really wanting to talk it out and go for the same goal was really cool I mean seriously man that was really cool Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about difficulty um, I came in a little bit later in the game and they'd already been working and um, I wouldn't say any specific scene was I was scared because I'm a little bit more of an onlooker and I just kind of experience whatever is going on with that family. Um, but it was trying to understand the tone of what the film was going to be made. And when I came in, uh, we shot our last scene first and it's like, okay, well, let's, what has this relationship been up to this point without actually shooting those scenes? Um, so I wouldn't, I don't want to say difficult, but those are the kind of the work that you have to do so that the, it can flow in the way that it's supposed to. So it's just a lot of discussion and communication with the director. Actually, did you bring that up, Jack? Yes. Uh, I, like, that, your journey to then be going for the mom, and I'm like, how are, how was that for you? And I'm also like, it seems, so, you know, we're like, don't believe you're straight. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like, wait, were you leading him on? Or were you I don't think that she's straight, oh. and I don't think that she's gay. I think that she's kind of very now, I guess, in our generation of she's drawn to what she's drawn to, and she was drawn to him. It just didn't end up being sexually. And I think that when she met the mother and saw her, that ignited some sort of sexual thing going on with her. And we talked about it before where I don't think she thought too much about it, she just did it. Wow. Um, and I think we do that a lot. We just follow what we're feeling in that moment and then later we're like, <laughs> 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 or nice. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Leah Thompson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. What was your guys' favorite moment? We talked a lot about the negative. What's the, your favorite thing you did on set or that happened on set? Oh God. <laughs> My favorite thing was um, where. Um, Glenn is swatting flies at barbecue. <laughs> and you only see like a tiny bit of it, but Jason went for a full kind of minute and a half. I just find it so funny. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I had a lot of favorite moments, um, but uh, it, um, I really enjoyed uh, being on the beach, actually. That day was really nice. I, feel, I mean, I enjoyed every scenes with everyone. I don't. I wasn't. I'm not playing favorites here, but I lo I loved it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, it was just that being at the beach was so invigorating. It's so beautiful there, and that was really fun. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of favorite moments. Oh, those are favorites. <laughs> Two boys. She's used to it. Um, well, first of all, <laughs> wow. um, well, first of all, did you see how beautiful that was, that set was? I mean, we were obviously having a miserable time in Malibu all day. All day. Um, no, I, I think that it's about the company you keep, and throughout this entire process, I was surrounded by really wonderful people that are all still my friends, and and it was a really creative, creative situation and everyone was open to change and movement and adjusting and being in the present. I mean, a lot of that was improv, which was wonderful to just be able to play and then see what they kept and what they didn't keep. And it's, it's um, yeah, it's just wonderful to be part of a team. Yeah, I think uh, I, driving away after the movie was done was awesome no joke because it was not it was not difficult but it was like you know i felt like at the last scene was our last scene the funeral scene and i was kind of like i don't know that felt in, very intense or open you know um on the day and you know seeing your little kids and dealing with that and i have four kids and um but then you know being done with that and you know giving your mic back and you're done with the movie and it's like you feel like you did something cool um, and thank you guys very much for being these are our crew members who are giving these, these questions so yeah. really appreciate you guys seriously um, I think my favorite moment was the first scene I shot and I think it's working with Peter back I love all of you dearly, but when you when you first come into a set and um, when you work with actors, some people want to get it perfect, and then sometimes you meet someone who wants to explore and figure it out as you go, and trusting someone that you'll find it is a very very rare thing that you find in actors, and I. Was, it was a true blessing working with you. So, yeah. That is so nice. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's really sweet. I can't see your face. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that really touches me. Um, it's quite um, it's quite a streamlined version of it 
that's in the movie, there was a bit more chat, I think, before before those characters get to that point. Um, but I, for me, the thing that was the sort of key to that scene is, is, is just where he goes at the end when he's like, you're exactly like me. Yeah. Because, um, I mean, even if I have even if I have small fights with my family, which is not so often, fortunately. But I think the thing, even in like, even in those moments of being frustrated, you kind of see your mannerisms and your history and your experience reflected back at you, and that's what makes those moments so loaded and maddening, and what can make those relationships difficult. So I think that was what I had in my head as the sort of key to, to that. So many times I've wanted to do what Tanya does and just out and give up and just be like, well, screw you and just drive off. It doesn't, it doesn't end well. well no, yeah. I won't do that. <laughs> yeah, I have it. <laughs> so many times I've wanted to do that. I just wanted to jump up and I just wanted to give you a hug and be like, I'm so sorry this is happening. I feel it. I felt it so purely because I'm going through it. Oh, well, I hope it gets better. Yeah, I hope so. Um, uh, I actually, I know, well, one of my favorite bands is the band that you played which is weird because I don't know anybody else who knows that band yeah. in the last, well, in the ending, and uh, who decided to choose that song? Actually, I, I, I've known the lead singer like for, for before they were even a thing. Mm -hmm. He used to be this uh, flame operator, yeah. a really lousy flame operator, actually. It's a fun story. <laughs> I was working yeah. on this small commercial, and he was like the slowest guy ever. Very sweet, but very slow, the lead singer. And I, I was like, this and it, it, dude, it's got to go work out. I, have to, we have to, I, I like you, but I have to find someone else. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I know, I'm, I'm really not good at this, I'm trying to make some money. I have this band, and we're, we have a record coming out soon, and I don't know going to work out. That was new, and it kind of yeah. became great. this album, right? So, which is one of my favorite bands, yeah. <laughs> and actually, interesting, I played that song for Peter back on, uh, on set, and I said, what do you think, could this be cool? That's like, the, the ending, and I kind of explained to him that, that he's looking into the camera and saying he's cured, and then we cut to this this, this, this breakthrough moment in the song. He's like, yeah, I, I see that. And then we tried it, and it, it, it eerily worked, you know, so well that the lyrics actually fall in between, in the spaces in between the one take scene with Billy and Peter. So, uh, which happens so rarely, right? Like, it's almost composed for the scene, which I, we had no idea what happened, but it worked so well, so we had to use that. Um, and just talking about the music, he did a great job with the music, but also the cinematography. You know, he was, was really strong. Can you stand up? Oh. Yeah. 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 your camera operator, and, and I mean, you had a good crew, it was obvious, from, from the look of the, of the film and the support that you gave your cast. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thanks so much. Thanks and, and now we